my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jeffrey Gordon, who will kick off our session on faculty research, innovation, discovery, and invention. Dr. Gordon is the Dr. Robert J. Glaser Distinguished University Professor and Director of the Edison Family Center for Genome Sciences and Systems Biology at the School of Medicine. All the titles will be very long, so bear with me a little bit. <laughs> Dr. Gordon is here this morning to talk about the development of treatments for childhood malnutrition. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Gordon. Thank you, Lee. Um, it's a privilege and pleasure to be able to speak to you on this day of celebration, of reflection, and of looking to the future. This is a defining century for humanity, a test of whether we have the capacity and commitment needed to tackle pressing, complex, and seemingly intractable problems facing our world. Framing these great challenges for and together with our students will, hopefully, inspire them to devote their energy talents, and lives to surmounting them. One challenge that uh, it, we face is ensuring that all children experience healthy growth so that they can realize their full potential. Unfortunately, undernutrition is the leading cause of mortality worldwide in children under five. It's not due to food insecurity alone. Factors operate within and across generation. Current therapies reduce mortality but have had limited success in overcoming the long-term consequences of undernutrition, which includes stunting, poor responses to vaccines, and impaired neurodevelopment. So what are we missing? The adult gut microbiota is a community of tens of trillions of organisms containing 100 times more genes than in our genome. It supplies us with capacities, capabilities that we've not had to evolve on our own, including the metabolism of dietary components. We've hypothesized that the gut microbiota is an organ with a definable program of assembly or development shared across different populations of infants and children, a program that begins at birth, and that disruption of this developmental process is causally related to undernutrition. A corollary is that healthy growth of our infants and children is linked to healthy development of this microbial community. Now, defining normal is a challenge. Describing the organization and dynamics of complex systems requires that we go beyond a simple list of parts to identifying interactions between components. In the gut microbiota, the number of potential interactions between its components is literally astronomical. So we have to develop a means to identify a smaller number of interacting components to describe normal community development in healthy infants and children. To do so, this inherently interdisciplinary area requires us to look beyond the field to other fields, and we turn to mathematical approaches that have been employed in the field of econophysics to identify consistently co-varying stocks that describe the dynamics of financial markets and economic sectors. Using this approach, we've identified a small group of consistently co-varying bacterial strains that describe normal community development in healthy members of birth cohorts living in countries like Bangladesh, as well as other low- and middle-income countries. It turns out that the development or maturation of the gut microbiota is completed by the end of the second postnatal year in healthy children. But children with undernutrition have immature gut microbial communities. There's an arrest in the development of these communities, causing them to look younger than expected based on the chronological age of its host. This immaturity is not repaired with current therapeutic interventions, which were designed without consideration or knowledge of the developmental biology of the gut microbiota. So you might ask, is this immaturity an effect or a cause of undernutrition. One way of approaching this problem is to introduce microbial communities from healthy or undernourished children into mice, young mice, that have been raised in sterile environments and fed diets representing those of the microbiota donors. These tests of causality have revealed that immature microbiota transmit features associated with childhood undernutrition to the recipient mice. That includes impaired growth, metabolism, and immune function. 
Comparing and contrasting the communities of these recipient mice and correlating them with their growth phenotypes allowed us to identify our therapeutic target. Growth promoting bacterial strains that are underrepresented and underperforming in immature microbiota. Now, these mice harbor the microbial communities of the very populations that we want to treat, and therefore they provide an opportunity to develop new therapeutic um, leads. How have we done that? With our colleagues uh, at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research, led by Tommy Damed, we've turned to complementary foods. Those are the foods that are introduced after exclusive milk feeding ceases as children are being weaned. Our hypothesis is that certain complementary foods contain key nutrients that are utilized by these microbial targets, these growth-promoting organisms in the developing microbiota. So we tested um, culturally acceptable, affordable, available, complementary foods from Bangladesh singly and in combinations for their ability to repair the immature microbiota that were um, in these recipient animals and identified microbiota-directed complementary food prototypes that were able to repair this immaturity and improve the health status of these animals, define mechanism of action, and turn to a clinical test of their efficacy. Um, in a four-arm, four-week-long study conducted uh, in Bangladesh uh, in children with moderate acute malnutrition, four of these microbiota-directed complementary food prototypes in a standard of care were administered for four weeks to children. Just before therapy was initiated, a blood sample was obtained, and we measured the levels of 1,300 different proteins that were biomarkers and mediators of various aspects of healthy growth. At the conclusion of treatment, we also obtained a blood sample so that we could compare and contrast the biological state of these children before and after treatment. We also monitored their microbiota. The results revealed the lead MDCF, which we affectionately call MDCF2. Um, it repairs the gut microbiota of these children and causes a dramatic shift in levels of many mediators of bone growth, metabolism, neurodevelopment, and immune function. This lead is now being tested in Bangladesh in children with moderate acute malnutrition and a history of severe acute malnutrition in larger cohorts for longer periods of time so that we can test the generalizability and durability of effects and safety, both short and long term. So what have we learned and what are we learning? Um, these results um, support the notion that healthy growth is linked to healthy development of the gut microbiota which gives us a more encompassing, broader view of human developmental biology, that we are a splendid combination of microbial and human, cellular, and genetic parts. We also see, as we repair the gut microbiota of these children with undernutrition, how we can link different components of that community to the operations of different systems and subsystem in developing infants and children. This type of research it uh, gives us an opportunity to achieve better definition of wellness for infants and children. And we believe that in the not too distant future, part of routine tests for wellness will include monitoring the developmental biology of our children's microbiota. There's a window in the first two years of postnatal life that's available to intervene if there are deviations from normal in this developmental program. Correction of such deviations may have very long-lived beneficial effects. This type of work could also influence and should influence um, um, policies and recommendations, guidelines for complementary feeding practices that are informed by knowledge of the developmental biology of the microbiota. This may allow us as parents to be more effective stewards of our children's precious microbial resources. And this type of approach can be generalized, and our attention is turning now to undernourished children who live in the city of St. Louis. There's an African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's certainly been the experience of all of us fortunate enough to be in this research, an incredibly talented group of students uh, here at Washington University, and our inspiring colleagues led by Tamid Ahmed at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research. Thank you for your attention.